CNN's Claire Sebastian has more now on how the battlefield is changing in eastern Ukraine with analysis from the British think tank Royal United Services Institute. Well, Ukraine's counteroffensive has reshaped the battlefield in a matter of days. They've taken more territory in the past week than Russia has since April. So the question is, how did they do it? I want to bring in Neil Melvin, who's the director of international security studies at the Royal United Services Institute, which is a think tank here in London. Now, what we're looking at here is the map of, of, of what Ukraine has retaken, this section here, uh, essentially an area twice the size of Greater London, really in the past week. So tell me, how did they do it? Yeah, I mean, it's been a dramatic change and quite a surprise because everyone had been focusing on the south uh, down here, around the Kherson, where we've spoken mm -hmm. before about the pressure Ukraine has been putting on here. And that, this, as it turns out, was a deliberate strategy to try and pull the Russians away from the north. And then Ukrainians have found a gap in the Russian lines and they pushed in here very quickly. They've moved very fast. They've got behind the Russians and the Russian front has collapsed. And so this area now has turned back to Ukrainian control. And it's still continuing. We're hearing that they're continuing to take settlements. Where do you think the, the offensive sort of moves next? Well, the challenge for Russia now is that their front line has collapsed, so their troops are retreating, often in disorder. They need to try and draw a line now to stop the, the attack. And I think what they want to do is, at minimum, hang on to this area called Luhansk, which is in this core Donetsk area, which has been an area that the Russians have dominated since 2014, when the first war began. Uh, they, they can't let the Ukrainians into that space, so they're going to try and pull back, regroup, and the Ukrainians will keep advancing until they hit this new front line and the Russians will try and hold them there. How have we got to the point that Ukraine has managed to sort of back Russia into a corner like this? What kind of a difference have the, the Western supply mm. of weapons made here? I want to zoom in as well on this region so we can look at it. Well, I think what we've seen really is a number of things. First of all, the, the Russian... Uh, initial attack probably didn't have enough troops and now they've run out mm. of momentum, they're running out of troops, they're running out of often irreplaceable equipment using these new uh, NATO standard artillery and rockets that, that have come in. The Ukrainians have been destroying all of the supply lines, the stocks of these weapons. Mm. And so it's been a very slow process and then suddenly a very quick one as the Russians collapse and, the, and they run out. And so, uh, and also what the Ukrainians have done very effectively is they've combined their different parts of the army, the yeah. air force, the ground troops, the rockets, and they've moved very quickly. So the Russians don't have enough forces to control this very long front line and the Ukrainians have punched through that. And that's where we see this with the red as Russian territory on August 28th and by September 11th. That is exactly. What so what we see, the Ukrainians came through here, they pushed on towards Kupiansk, which is a yeah. key sort of infrastructure point, and then they struck south. And then this key town, the Russians had to basically flee it uh, in disorder and then try and regroup beyond the river. And I just want to show a for comparison. This was the map back on April 2nd, when we'd seen another sort of what Russia called regrouping after their withdrawal from Kiev there. But essentially, they had all this territory up here that they'd taken. They were still attacking from Crimea down there. And if you compare that now to what we're seeing, it's a net loss. Yeah, I mean, the, the Russians are saying that the, um, uh, the policing uh, invasion is still going according to plan. But what you see there, as, as you say, is a series of losses for Russia. They committed troops, first of all, in Kiev, then in Donetsk, then down to the south. Now they're trying to possibly push back. They may have uh, lost up to 80,000 troops, so 50,000 dead and another 30,000 uh, injured, thousands of tanks and armoured vehicles. So for all of this period, they've suffered all those losses and now Ukraine is, is I think, sensing that there are gaps uh, where they can maybe move in further into the south. There's 15 to 20,000 Russian soldiers in Kherson on, on the western side of the river. They can't really get across. Yeah. Ukrainians are pushing here. It's possible the Ukrainians will do a third uh, attack somewhere along this line. They'll look for gaps where the Russians can't now deploy to stop them and they'll try and push in. So they'll keep the Russians on the back foot now up until the winter. And so Russia says it will press on with its strategic aims. We'll have to see what that means. Neil Melvin, thank you so much for joining us.